Hey there, gerblets. Welcome back. This is the gerbil, and uh, this is going to be a really, really good Kyber 3 3v3. My opponent has Sith Eternal and Kenobi on defense. We're going to drop them both. We're going to full clear, actually. It's a lot of fun. We'll open up with Admiral Akbar against Bosk with Omicron Zam and Relic 8 Boba Fett. Yeah, see, I've been, I'm, I'm really feeling the confidence of this squad and pushing up their expectations now more and more. Part of the tremendous success is that tenacity up. And if I'm not mistaken, tenacity up is not like 10 or 20 or 30%, but I think it's 99,999%. Uh, it's, it's insanely high. So landing debuffs almost is impossible, which means that against a lot of high tier teams, these guys are a heck of a lot more viable. And then, the turn meter train is just insane. Look at this. See, watch this. Here we go, and down goes boss. Right? Look at that. And we're still at full health, full protection, everybody. And and of course, you got to remember that that relicate Boba and boss is getting all of those Omicron buffs from Zam. And so, <laughs> I just don't even know what to make of it. I think it's so. Um, unexpected and so so awesome so what, what does zam's omicron do well see zam's omicron uh says that in it zam gains 60 percent increases to her offense max health protection okay that's good five percent speed for each other bounty hunter okay that's fine but then other bounty hunter allies gain 20 percent of her offense health protection and speed so so she's gaining 60 percent of the others and then giving 20% of it back out there. I mean, that's that's huge, which is why that's such a good Omicron. And yes, it was a 2v1 Omicron, but it was also a Relic 8 bounty hunter, Boba Fett, who hits like a freight train. And Bosk, who's one of the best tanks with protection and health recovery in the game. Uh, and they didn't, they, they had absolutely zero chance, zero chance. So, you know, for everyone out there who's still saying it's not worth the investment, I think that's wholly inaccurate because every single GAC, it's a full banner or close to full banner win. That, that's worth the investment. I mean, seriously. Um, of course, Wampa is probably in my, in a lot of people's book now, the number one Omicron. So this is my second GAC match in a row where I'm going to beat a Sith Eternal with a solo Wampa. Um, I forgot to post the May 19th video, so I'll do some excerpt vids later. But in that one, I actually beat a Relic 8 Sith Eternal with the Armorer. And I think it was Maul on the side, I don't recall. But yeah, um, I did lose with a Relic 5 last week. And it got so close. In fact, I, I lost because I put it on automatic. And when Wampa should have whomped, he howled. And if he had whomped, he would have hit for about 120,000 damage. And, and of course, Hellsteel would have recovered a lot of his health. But the AI said, hey, let's howl. And as a consequence, my Wampa, who was in the red, got killed. And I was like, you stupid AI and you stupid gerbil for not, you know, manually controlling. Anyway, uh, we can see here this Sithy is almost down. It's going to take a little while. Um, a lot of these battles I'm going to hit, like, fast forward on. I'm going to speed up. The fleets I'm going to speed up by about 1.5%. And, and, and towards the end, I'm going to hit a lot of other battles. Uh, just because this is such a long video. It, it's an incredibly long video. <laughs> 36 minutes, man. If y'all stick with me, I love you dearly. Um, I think that there's some really good things we'll show here in a little bit. The the trick about Wampa, if you haven't figured out by now, is not to mod him for offense or crit damage. A lot of people think you should. No, 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 no. 40% stacking is such an exponential gain that whether you start with six or 12,000 offense, it's irrelevant after four or five howls and Wampa's gonna howl a lot what he needs is longevity and survivability max that boy's health out max his health 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 that's all he needs is health uh, maybe a little tenacity but health all right all right so 
just took down his Sith Eternal, time for my Sith Eternal, and who else to go after but a Qui-Gon Jinn Omicron. Now, I have to say, I normally would not do this, would not do this, would not do this, except I always map out my battles before I start playing any of them. Um, I, I make a document where I take screenshots of my opponents, I'll, I'll post a vid about how I do it later, but I, I take screenshots of all their defenses and then I've, I've got all of my characters uh, in little graphics that I can drag and drop around and I map out who's going to fight where and I simply had no other place that I needed Sith Eternal. And of course, the Omicron from Kwai John, that was fun, the Omicron from Kwai John just evaporates when he's up against the GL. I mean, it's like the homeboy just gets scared and his powers wither. So I figured, eh, what the heck? It's it's a guaranteed win, pretty much. It, it, it invalidates the Omicron, and I didn't need him anywhere else. Uh, Night Sisters are, as everyone knows, this is just old school, super duper easy to beat, uh, especially with Empire. I mean, uh, I guess if you're still learning the game, you're still new, the um, mid-tier, whatever, you might still struggle because a zombie's perpetual revives, but uh, Empire just walks right past them. I, I didn't need the First Order, or no, First Order. <laughs> I've been farming First Order and they got two pilots. I didn't need the Empire pilot here, TIE Fighter pilot, but I put him in just because it's nice to have somebody else to absorb some shots and damage, because you know... You know Night Sisters are going to attack, and you know Daka is likely to stun someone. And for whatever reason, I've noticed that the AI tends to favor uh, the, the TIE Fighter pilot. I don't know why, but see there, just hit him again, attacked him like three or four times earlier. And of course, he gets uh, Foresight, and he has a high dodge rate anyway, so it, it's kind of nice. He's not a tank, but he almost serves that purpose. So in 3v3, Palp and Vader are going to do all your real damage and do the butt kicking. And then TIE Fighter Pilot, he just kind of stands there and absorbs the hits. I mean, your, your experience may be different, but I've noticed this pretty consistently. Alright, General Grievous, Relic 7 with two of his uh, bucket heads over there. Bucket heads? No, oh, those are troopers. Clankers, sorry. So we got two Relic 4 Clankers on the side. Um, and I put in a gear 12 mace because the rework on mace is pretty pretty good. I mean not amazing, but his basic and actually I actually gotta look this up real quick because I don't wanna I don't wanna say this wrong, but Mace Windu's basic, um, it applies ability block. And so both Bastila and Revan can call an assist, which means you can apply that ability block. And then, of course, this is also an easy win because Revan applies Mark. So, initially, um, Grievous is under stealth because of IG, so you want to hold off the temptation to do his swarm attack on IG. I mean, you might be thinking, ah, just dip the damage out there and do what we can, but no, actually, you, A, you don't want to kill anyone, and B, the extra two attacks aren't going to help you when when your wingmen, in this case Mace and Basila, are forced into attacking the tank, which is never optimal. So you just gotta hold off, wait for Grievous to come out of stealth, and then mark him with Revan, and then kill him. It's pretty straightforward. Alright, so here we go. We're into fleets, cleared the first section, no problemo, no problemo. Alright, what do we got going on here? So we got Rebels versus Negotiator, and I took a whole squad of seven fighters in and I regretted it even before I did it. I knew it was overkill. But Negotiator can be a challenge. Rebel should win if you are comparable relics, which I most certainly am. Uh, and especially that lineup with fives and, and wide wing on the open is not optimal in the slightest versus Rebels. Um, you may have noticed early on, I used Home One's heal on Biggs, even though he was at relatively high protection and full health. And you might be going, why did you do that? Well, the reason is because Y-Wing is not going to land any debuffs. That sounds weird, but um, initially, Anakin's going to drop a debuff, Fives can drop a debuff, but then the Y-Wing will not. And 
you need to cleanse those debuffs initially off of Biggs. You need him like not necessarily full health protection, but just debuff free. And it's not going to get another debuff until either home one, uh, or sorry, he's not going to get cleansed until home one cleanses him, or he gets a third debuff in Hans Millennium Falcon. His static ability says, oh, you got three? Let me wipe those off for you. And, and like I said, that Y-Wing is not going to do it. So what's going to happen is the Y-Wing is going to do its little dance AOE thingy. It's going to take off everybody's buffs, leaving him pretty open and exposed. And then he'll get killed by whatever comes in next often. So even when he's at pretty high health, you still just go ahead and cleanse him. All right, Chimera Mirror Match. Oh boy, am I learning how to use my Empire better. So when... About, about a, well, when the three fleet requirement hit, I was losing Chimera versus Chimera or Chimera versus Executor like 100%. And I've geared my uh, Emperor Shuttle up. Uh, my second sister is up to gear nine now. I finally got the ship at seven stars after the last conquest round. But that, that alone isn't doing it. I'm, I'm just finally learning the proper turn order the proper um, like reinforcement, which is a dud no-brainer at this point, it's second sister. And voila, look at that. I've gone from typically losing to uh, almost flawless victory. Now, I, I did have a misplay or two still, um, but and I'm cognizant of that, but damn, is second sister good. She makes that fleet really, really useful. I don't know about second sister, but let's say her, her, her TIE fighter, her TIE interceptor, whatever the heck she's in pilot of. This one scared the poo-poo out of me. That opening up and knocking out Ahsoka so quick. See, my B-Wing is still six stars. B-Wing? Y-Wing. My Y-Wing is still six stars. And that is a problem because it's a better op uh, like opening defense, I guess, than fives is. So now I'm sitting on an almost dead Anakin versus a mostly undamaged fleet. And I say mostly because they still got Ashlon out there. And now we lose Anakin, and I'm like, holy smokes, we're going to lose this, aren't we? Spoiler, we're going to win. <laughs> I'm going to pull this one back. Um, look at this. Plo is down to the red, but right there, that was a good double hit. So the shuttle and the echelon are both in the almost no health. All right, we're going to pull in. This is, uh, yeah, we're going to pull in Ark, who I think is still at six stars also. So I've got some growth to do here. And I really meant to, a second ago, attack the shuttle. I, that was a misplay. I attacked the Echelon. Um, I needed to get rid of that shuttle so bad. Actually, I needed to get rid of both of them. Um, let's see, had I attacked the shuttle, it would have just died right there. Uh, see, now it's got that bonus protection. We're going to get another Hunted on fives. Okay, now we're going to get a nice AoE, and boom, there goes the Echelon. Now that Echelon's out of the way, it's open season, and right there, I actually forgot that the Silencer Kylo is still on the board. I totally forgot about him. Like, he just blends in with the black spacey background, which is the point of the black ship in reality. Um, I think I think in real, if we ever actually evolve to that point where we can fly around the galaxy attacking and shooting and fighting in space, I think it would be a lot more like submarine warfare. I think stealth is more, prob more prob probably more realistic stealth and surprise attacks than any of this nonsense because in space there's no resistance right so of course planes are uh, spaceships are not going to fly around and bank and stuff like that that's total fiction so there's no resistance there's no inertia um the distances are such a magnitude it's beyond human and um, like understanding for the most part when when you you know if you're actually flying around in open space these ships would be accelerating the speeds that are a measurable percentage of light, even if it's like one, like a tenth of light or a fifth, or you know, 0.1 percent of light speed. It's still such a fast speed that flying by and manually shooting would be impossible, utterly, utterly nonsensical, impossible. So I think more realistically, what it would be is more about stealth, masking your 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 heat and um, you know the form factor to basically just try to torpedo each other to death. Um, what was the name of that book series? It was a sci-fi book series that I read. It was really good. Oh man, look at that. Relic 443 Jawas versus Relic 544, or was it 6644, I think, or 655. I think it was 655 versus 433. And oof, we lose a Jawa, but whatever. You know, a lot of people also will say Jawas aren't worth relicing. I disagree with that. 
Um, I use them every GAC. Again, every GAC. It's a guaranteed win. Almost. 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 Alright, so we're gonna throw in the, the Malak here against the Shakti with the very frequently seen, infrequently seen, Clone Trooper, and we got Echo over there on the side. Um, nothing to worry about in this one, as long as your Malak has enough health, uh, which of course he gets a lot of that from protection, that, you know, that, that from his kit, whatever. Protection goes away, he gains health. As long as he's got enough protection, health, sorry, and enough tenacity, uh, he's just going to weather these hits and then drain life and mold it out. See, there goes one. Bye-bye. Adios, muchachos. So, how's the gerbil? Well, I'm in day 51 of the Shanghai citywide lockdown. It's just beautiful weather here. Blue skies, which are mostly uncommon because the city with so much population tends to have a high level of pollution. But since nobody's been working, the factories have mostly been shut down. Uh, there's no traffic at all on the streets. The ports are mostly closed. The sky is beautiful and the city is great, except we're mostly trapped inside or in our little neighborhood compounds. We were supposed to be free last week and, and they had this crazy like easing of the lockdown where they give you these cards that say each household, within each household one member can leave twice a week for up to four hours. And it's just like, what the hell are you, what? One person can go outside for up to four hours twice a week. And of course the day when that was supposed to start came, the compound management handed out all those cards and told us, sorry, you can have this if you want for a keepsake to remember these challenging times, but the government has extended the lockdown. And so for the last week, again, we're trapped inside our compound community, which is a, a little over two city blocks big, and we can go outside, there's a playground for the kid, but I mean, we can't go out to the street, we can't go anywhere, of, well, of course, all the stores and everything remain closed. So it's, it's stressful, I have to admit, it's very, very stressful. Officially, though, that easing of lockdown again will resume tomorrow. So my wife and I are already talking. Who gets to go out first? Yeah, we'll see. It's not just the two of us, actually. My in-laws are with us. I love my family, but they've been with us for... They were here a couple weeks visiting before the lockdown. So my in-laws have been here now. Well, we're, we're past two months in this apartment. That has been difficult. All right, uh, Jedi Master Luke with uh, versus Kenobi in 3v3. So he's got Cat over there. Okay, so this actually is easier than one would expect to beat Kenobi with Jedi Master Luke. Um, it's a lot easier because similar to the situation before with the, the Empire TIE Fighter pilot, the AI really likes to ignore Jolie, <laughs> and as I say that, he gets attacked, and and focus on Jedi uh, Grandmaster Yoda. I mean, it really wants to kill Yoda, it seems. Uh, whether you're in 5v5 or, or 3v3, the computer tends to prioritize Grandmaster Yoda, especially with that, I was about to say, with cats, like, one-shot kill. And as long as you got Jolie there, it's not a problem because he just brings him back. So what you do is you you focus your attention on one tune. I would in 5v5 be going after Cat, but in 3v3 we don't have all the assists from uh, Ahsoka Tano and we don't have gas to worry about. So we're just going to focus on, the, uh, on General Kenobi because he's gonna taunt anyway. And we're gonna use Grandmaster, or sorry, Jedi, the names are too long. We're gonna use Luke's, I think it's Inherited Teaching, to try to get to his ultimate as quick as we can, which we just got. And because it does the true damage to Kenobi, so we're gonna be able to knock down his health and protection really fast. Especially since Jolie doesn't hit very hard, the Inherited Teachings from Luke is gonna guarantee it's still gonna be hitting for, depending on how your Luke is modded, anywhere from 50 to 80,000 damage. All right, so that's the second time we've now lost Grandmaster Yoda. And I think the computer prioritizes him, of course, because he spreads all those buffs, gives the foresight, etc. But this is the second time we've now revived him. And once again, 
He's back on the board, and we've uh, we've now been able to take down General Kenobi once. Um, I'm shifting there to Ahsoka Tano, Cat, General, Commander, whatever, because I just noticed her health was so low, which I didn't plan for. But since we we popped General Kenobi, then Cat was open and down she goes. So now it's 3v2. The real enemy here is the clock. Man, Kenobi can just keep bringing back that protection. After we got rid of Cat, I would also recommend still killing off the non-GL opponents. But in this situation, it's 3v2, and there's no threat anymore on the other side. I mean, Cat was the only attacker in this squad that I care about at all. So I figured, what the heck, let's just get rid of Kenobi, and there he goes with a minute 45 left. Of course, at this point, I could just put it on autoplay, but we like to savor the torture here. I mean, beating Kenobi in 3v3 is, is just a feel-good moment, no matter how you view it. So take your time and murder these people slowly to savor the moment, right? Get the maximum pleasure you can out of that crushing defeat for your opponent. Yeah. Getting a little sadistic there. Sorry. Okay. All right. So Geo's failed and we got Newt. Newt B1 and who's that? Django Fat. Man, that is such a good defensive lineup. So we're going to get to that in a second, but we just lost our Geos here, which actually surprised me because R2 hit really, really, really hard above his weight here. I don't know why. Um, so I went in with my Imperial Troopers because they can knock out all that turn meter and we can just take out somebody before they hopefully get the turn. And we got some dodges right there and we're not getting the speed I was wanting out of it. And we got another dodge because the foresight. And now they're doing their dance. We got some more foresight, and this is just beginning to really piss me off. But inevitably, they're gonna lose. I mean, Jedi Training Ray is not gonna beat Imperial Troopers usually. Just so much foresight, and Jiminy Cricket is BB-8 fast. I don't like the character BB-8. I know, maybe sacrilege for a lot of people, but I just I just don't like it. Um, and in the game, it just feels like 90% of the time, all he does is roll back and forth. Come on, come on. Thank you. There we go. All right, so I would say full banners, but no, someone lost protection, and of course we lost a match beforehand. Frustrating. All right, so Newt. So this Newt B it B Newt B one and Django. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it it's a solidly good defensive team because Django enters the battlefield with damage immunity under Newt, and when you take out Newt the first time, Newt comes back and goes into stealth. And of course, B one doesn't matter how hard you hit him; you have to hit him over and over and over again because of the way his character is. You've just taken off. I think four, eight, or, or 12 stacks, depending on the damage. I don't remember. Um, I don't know how it works, actually. So uh, a lot of people will make the mistake of going in with CLS. It, it, inevitably, everyone will make that mistake, it seems. And you're going to stun Django Fett before the battle, the damage immunity wears off, and then CLS will just keep reducing the turn meter, and you time out, and you feel so dumb. So don't feel bad if you've done that. I've done it. I think everyone's done it. So uh, I go in here just because I know that these guys, they're not going to remove the turn meter. So Django's going to get a turn, but we also have no chance of losing. So it's we lose a few banners, almost guaranteed. That's another good thing about that team. It's going to take banners away. All right, we're going to speed this one up a little bit. I really, really love this Ewok squad. It, it has no damage output at all but it also is super good now we just whiffed right there on tebow missing cad bane who he should have hit and removed 100 percent of his turn meter which allowed them him to attack and that kind of put us in a little uh-oh moment but we're going to recover this without any problems and man they just they just really like ewok elder right now partially because he's not in stealth and the other two are ah that, that's a rng oops um now, something else here, going against this particular bounty hunter squad is problematic because Tebow's leadership 
gives your Ewoks, I think, a 55% chance or maybe higher to go into stealth at the beginning of their turn, which you really want. You want Elder in stealth to protect him, and you want Tebow in stealth so his basic takes off 100% turn meter. But you see, Dengar, that boy, when Dengar's in stealth, like now, your own Ewoks cannot go into stealth. Uh, and then also, Tebow's second ability, while passing 100% turn meter, puts himself into stealth to guarantee he can do his basic turn meter removal. Well, as long as Dengar's in stealth, that nerfs both Tebow's leadership and Tebow's basic. So this, this actually turned out to be harder than I thought because I did not remember that upon entering the fight. Once it got going, I was like, why am I not going in stealth? Why am I, oh snap, but we win. See, 54 banners could have done better if it wasn't Dengar, but that's okay. That's all right. Okay, so next, this one I'm also gonna speed up because this one is just maddening. Right, the health and protection recovery, as we all know, on Kylo Ren and Mask is really, really good. The hope is merely that we stun them down, like that. Cad Bane stuns, Dengar stuns. We ability block with Boba Fett, and we just kill them with <clears throat> the biggest hits we can. But it's not going so good. Look at that. Here we go, big hit, but didn't do much. And I think I also mistake, made a mistake here, a tactical dis mistake. I think I should not have focused on Kylo Ren. He's harder to kill than is, uh, or rather, Unmasked Crew is harder to kill than um, Episode 7 Kylo Ren, I think. Yeah, 79, right, yeah. No, no, 4, 5, 6, yeah, yeah 7. So. so I should have gone after Episode 7 rather than Episode Eight. And I figured that out. Unfortunately, I figured it out rather late. We're still gonna win. Again, maddeningly slow. We're getting some good hits in there. Man, look at that. All my bounty hunters are in the yellow, and I'm like, just stun, please. And there we go. We lose Dengar, and then Boba finally got a good shot off. Um, and he gets a revive because he did get to kill somebody. Now we're, we're back into the greens. We got some ability block. We got offensive down, we got the stun, and yet we're not doing any damage. <laughs> oh geez, we gotta get that health health recovery immunity or whatever it is on there, which we're getting periodically. There's the ability block, there's another stun, but, but it's not sticking on him. He's like, like, like what do they call it, Teflon. You know, nothing sticks to Teflon, right? Crew is Teflon. But we're getting there, just painfully slow. Oh. Come on, come on. Yeah, it's like, I want to do the <laughs> the missile. What is that attack called? We got to look that one up. I, I don't know the name of Boba's attacks. So here we go, Boba Fett, execute. Yeah, I thought so. I just always think Rex has execute, because everyone says Rexecute. All right, so we finally got the win. And now we're coming in with Boy, Boy Nest. Um, Farm Boy Nest is probably the best, just pure tenacity boosting leadership. I think it's plus 55% tenacity. No, it's not the best, of course. I mean, Akbar gives you tenacity up. Yeah, several people do, um, but, but all Nest needs is that tenacity, right? He needs lots and lots of tenacity. So even though my farm boy Luke is a very, very low gear, uh, I will still take him in quite frequently with Nest. And again, I know he's gonna get popped, and he does, but yeah, uh, let's see, I'm looking for the leadership. There it is. Luke has uh, all allies gain 50% tenacity. Okay, and whenever an ally resists a detrimental effect, they gain advantage for two turns. I don't think that advantage really helps Nest because of the stack and crit chance. Um, but the Mon Mothma team, especially with with Bayes, not Bayes, Chirrut over there, is just perpetually getting those health up and health recovery buffs. 
And remember, every time one of those expire, every single time one of those expires, Nest is gaining 2% stacking critical damage. So it's only, it's inevitable. Again, slow, tedious, and grindy, but it's inevitable that eventually Nest is going to win this. Um, if in a 5v5, you, you can actually run out of time. I mean, that, that is true. You can totally be clocked. But for the most part, none of these, the, the rebel fighters are going to do enough damage to kill Nest unless they just get really lucky when she has no bonus protection. But because of the 90% and the 55% reduction in damage from all the assists through Mon Mothma, she's just, Nest just stacks up that protection and they can't hurt her. Yep, see, there it is. 54 banners. Not perfect. None of these are perfect. I'm really, really eager to see if I win this match or not. All right. Um, this is a very interesting three-person three combination. Uh, I really don't like Nest in here, but see, Talon starts in stealth, and Dooku goes into stealth, which forces you into attacking Nest. So it's it's better to go in here with some AoEs, and man, see see what Dooku just did there to poor little uh, Cody, and I think Cody's relic like two or three. I don't remember. I was I was gearing him up for Kenobi before I switched to Slicker. Switched to Slicker because at that time I realized I was seven, maybe eight months away from, from Watt being seven stars, um, and and I, I got Sith Eternal. No, I switched to Sith Eternal. Yeah, and I got Sith Eternal in two and a half months. Now I'm going to get Slicker by by June. Certainly by June. Maybe in the next four, three or four weeks, actually. So I'm going to get two GLs in the time it'll take me to get a seven-star wad. That's my bad, because the guild I'm in is great. People love my, my guild mates. Um, but we're not a highly aggressive guild. We don't tell people what to farm or do. So, you know, we don't get a lot of wad shards. <laughs> Yeah, I was so hopeful to win this one right there. Yeah, I was really hopeful, but not going to happen. Relic 6 Shakti just does not beat Relic 6 Dooku. Maybe my mods suck on her. They probably do, because she's not a high priority character for me. All right, so we're going to switch to... This is my first time playing against Aiden on offense. This is my first time. Now... Two things in this situation. One, Thrawn is a fantastic character to throw in against Aiden, as is Royal Guard. They're both really good because neither call assists, which is where Aiden's Omicron like thrives, right? Every time you assist or attack out a turn, I think, then Aiden's team is gonna recover 20% health and protection. It just keeps them alive forever. And Thrawn and Royal Guard do not assist. And Thrawn fractures, which takes somebody out of your lineup as well as theirs, which means he's he's not going to be, you know, he, he's not going to be in the way. And of course, in a three v three, it takes it down to two v two, which which is more manageable, of course. At the same time, Royal Guard is going to stun people, which is just going to prevent them from taking turns, and you can't go wrong with that. Piet, on the other hand, I forgot, totally forgot that his basic is a 100% chance to call an assist. It's like, son of a gun. So knowing, 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 knowing how Aiden's Omicron works, I walked in here with a team that is direct, well, with a leader that her Omicron is directly aimed at. And so we're going to time out sadly i do have this fast forwarded so that's not real seconds clicking by but we're gonna time out on this i debated leaving but i was really hopeful that we could at least kill the death trooper or get him down to very low health i was tempted to just get both Aiden and death trooper down to as low turn meter as possible like right after they both taken a turn and then um timing out so that the next squad that comes in won't have preloaded turn meter. It's a good trick, by the way. If you just back out, it resets it, right? Then the shore trooper comes back to life and everyone's at zero. But in this case, I don't want to back out, actually. I would much rather go in here with shore trooper being gone. Um, 
Aiden with one trooper is so much less threatening than two, let alone five or four in 5v5. But you know what? Lock it, watch the clock. Watch the clock. Two, one, zero. Nailed him. Perfect. We got rid of him. I took a screenshot of that. I was like, holy heck, that's impressive. So now who are we going to go destroy Aiden with? Well, she's like gear nine or something. So pretty much could be anybody. But holy heck, this... Like, she shouldn't be this good. Not on her own. Um, we just got to get a hit off. And she's already attacked three, four times. Five. Like, how is she so fast? I got to go read her kit. Five attacks. Jen is that my Jen is like 310 speed or something. There's no way. I got to read that kit. Distant, of course, killed with the one shot. That was expected. Oh, well. Okay, and now Dooku, we just gotta mop him up. Jedi Training Ray, for that very reason, ability block, speed down, offense, days, put everything you want on it. I put in Treya just for the, the isolate. I just really didn't wanna screw around on this one. Um, I just wanted to win. So there you go, got the win. And there it is, people. Thanks so much for watching, if you're still there. I really enjoy making these videos for you, so. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.